So it's a fresh best of three. It's TVZ time in the Wardy TV Spring Championship, and I know everyone's had their eyes on this. As we've got in the bottom right corner of the map, our Red Terran player from Mouse Sports. This is Hero Marine. And the upper left-hand side, our Blue Zerg player is Raynor. And then we get to see some Raynor today, finally, like I said. I know a lot of people kind of probably wanted to see a bit of Raynor. Um, like I say, so the order, just to, just to completely clarify, the order of matches coming up, we'll be casting this TVZ, then more TVZ in Clem versus Denver. Then we're going to be casting some Clem versus Showtime. I know a lot of people are excited for the Clem matches. And then we'll go back and finish the day off with Raynor versus Gung Fu Banda as well. Providing none of these series are like an hour plus long and I get a bit too tired out. Because uh, I have already been live for eight and a half hours today, guys. So, providing everything's like a reasonable best of three length, then we can uh, we can go through all of those. Sound good? Cool. Perfect. I'm glad you're all on board. Um, Rain or Hero Marine, anytime this starts, I gotta say, if you end up watching this on YouTube, because it probably will end up on YouTube, do consider hitting the like button, subscribe button. You guys know it. Do the YouTube things. This is my one chance in the week to tell you to do the YouTube things, because not every series is as obvious as this one being put on the YouTube. But now, now you guys know. Perfect. Brilliant. Killing it today, aren't we? Right, we're just getting through everything. Alright, so, TVZ. Kind of fun. You know, Hammering Reno is a, is a classic, in fairness. And uh, these guys always give us pretty fun games. Obviously, I'd say for the most part, Reno gets the better end of the trades. I think well, one thing that, that very is very much so is noticeable about Hammering when you compare them to, like, Clem is... Clem's TVZ is obviously on a very high level. And I think Clem's TVZ outshines his other matchups by quite a bit. Whereas Hero Marine, I would say, some of his power was definitely being more well-rounded overall. And I'd say a bit stronger in TVT and TVP than Clem was for a long time. Now I'm not so sure about TVT. TVP, I actually still think I prefer Hero Marine over Clem a little bit. Um, but his TVZ was definitely not quite Clem level. And I don't think anyone would disagree with that. You know, he just plays in a different style, and he just never, you know, while Clem was out here trading matchups with Raynor all of last year and going on a fairly 50-50 course, Hero Marine had a streak where he won a couple matchups, but it was very Raynor dominated. And that really kind of says to me that, again, his TVZ was kind of not quite Clem level. And that's kind of where Hero Marine, I feel like, struggled the most last year. You know, if, if Hero Marine had the stronger TVC, maybe we could have been talking about a Hero Marine championship last year in the ESL Pro Tour at some point, you know, in a DreamHack event. Because genuinely, like, you know, in, in Europe, if you are able to win in TVZ, you can win a tournament, basically. It's, like, if you, have the, if you can nail the top-level TVZ, that's your biggest hurdle done, right? So, yeah, coming into this, I'm interested to see how the TVZ is developed. I'm finally getting around to my point. I'm interested to see how the TVZ is developed, develop, because last time they played was in Katowice. That was this year, and that was a win for Raynor. But Hirmarin put up a good fight. Hirmarin also won against Raynor the second time they played this year. That was in the ESL Open Cup 57 back in February. And that was following a loss in the last chance main event in the group stages as well. So, Raynor has won two series to one against Hirmarin this year. Sorry, three to one this year. I didn't even realize they played in another Open Cup final on my birthday, January 7th. How about that? I didn't even realize that one. Um, but what I'm trying to say is eventually, after three minutes of babbling on, I'm very excited to see where Hirmarin's TVZ is at right now because it feels like the kind of matchup you need to work on a lot. And obviously, this is a good chance to see it tested for the first time in a, in a couple months or so. I know, this is really a very long way of saying I'm excited to see what DVZ Earring brings us right now. I mean, Reynolds ZVT obviously looked brilliant the last couple of days. We saw him playing against Clem in that Open Cup Finals on Monday. And considering Reynolds was coming out of a break, I don't think you can really look at that series and be too upset with his current form, uh, considering he's getting back on track. Now, there's just going to be some Roach pressure. Looking to get some damage done, but already droning behind it, so there's not going to be reinforcement follow-ups. The Batchy here will get this cleanup. The question is how quickly does it happen how many units do you lose out on before this banshee cleans up you can probably lose <gasps> oh them vials he just got out of the way of the second one in time you can lose a few scvs here without issue because at the end of the day you are in a position where you are equal and worker slash ahead initially so losing a few just kind of puts you down to the work account you're meant to be at yeah, i would say this is not terrible obviously you've lost the hellions a few marines this is also Reynor losing a lot of Roach Ravages that he invested into as well. 
And you look at resources lost here, this is going to come out to be pretty much even. A little advantage to Hero Marine. And then when you look at the income graph, Hero Marine mined a little bit more before. Reno will mine a little bit more now. And then there's about a seven worker difference between them. That'll increase a little more right now. But Hero Marine can also focus up on rebuilding SCVs, triple command center in the game. This is completely fine. If this was two base and you don't have a third CC, you'd be a little bit more worried. With a third CC, this is completely okay. And you've got the Banshees as well. And they're an important note to take, you know, to take down here because the two Banshees provide you some harassment potential that can deal damage to continue to help you in this game as well and to put you into a better position, improve your setup, and to slow rain or down, and obviously just, you know, again, make up on where you are in this game right now. Kind of interesting you didn't finish off that score. I mean, it finished up, that's why. Uh, so that makes sense. I'm kind of again about the fact the sport at some point will actually finish building. Nice little save on this drone here. That's going to be... Oh, the cancel when the spore was going to die into the rebuild is cute. Nice way to save a drone there. Well played by Reno. The micro there is absolutely on point. As the Banshee comes back in, a little bit more damage being done. Down to that low ground. Our Spire is building up from Reno on the back of this natural expansion. So all of this coming through, the couple of Banshees making their way around the top. And a couple of evolution chambers in the back of this main base as well. Scan those evo chambers up and running. Again, the link speed is coming up on this spawning pool. So getting that ready to roll. Again, tank, 1-1 one, one upgrade, stim pack. All of this continuing through the couple tech labs on those barracks. And our Banshees of Hero Marine all the way back home now. Seventy workers to fifty-nine, so it's not honestly kind of where you want to be, right? Hero Marine has his third CC down. I wouldn't say anyone's really in kind of too much of a crazy advantage after this early game. Maybe you're looking at Reno is a bit slowed down on the upgrades, but he also went for a bit of a faster Spire, so that's kind of going to make up for it because he's going to get muters on the map and he'll take some better map control. He could have had the upgrades faster and gone for the Spire later, but he prefers to have the map control. What is kind of fun is because he opened with that Roach Rush, he still doesn't have Ling Speed. Now that's actually pretty crazy because with Stim done, there are some attacks that would absolutely just rip you to shreds right now as Raynor. These Medivacs are out, let's see if they drop across. I think at the end of the day the Ling Speed will be done in time anyway, but that's kind of wild. You know, if, if I guess if, well, I guess if anything earlier in the game came than Banshees. Uh, you know, say you don't go Banshees and you go for something aggressive instead. Raynor obviously isn't going to build Lings, he's going to build those Roaches to defend if something like that happens, so... In that regard, obviously, it makes sense that you don't need the link speed as quickly, and I'm sure the timing of his link speed makes sense along that line. Because you see him catching a queen in the center. Now Transfusion's ready. As the queens kind of realize they're going to be under attack, they turn it around. The links came in from the other side. Here, Marine going to get wrapped around once again. Just going to save those Marines again. Unit retention is one of the key parts of TVZ. The more you trade efficiently, the easier time you're going to have. So being able to just lift up and get out of bad fights is one of the key parts of making this matchup. So much more difficult for the Zerg. This one Banshee remaining is a little sad. I mean, it's very difficult to make one Banshee very useful. It's going to come around. Try for a drone coming out of the extractor. Doesn't work. Muters clean it up. Good little first tell that Muters are now ready to go for Hero Marine, though. So at least he picks up some information. And he also uses this as a chance still to push through the center and clean out some creep. Now, what he's doing in the middle of the map is fun. Leaving these tanks on this side. Now, obviously, you need to protect these from the Muters, but... It does mean the ground army can't really run at you from here because they're not going to have a good time jumping on the tanks going through that choke point. You could flank in from the top side. But that's going to make you have to go for a bit of a longer way around than where Hero Marine expected the army to be. So I quite like that little bit of positioning. As he is still looking to push through the center, he's denied the creep here. So it is going to start dissipating. It is going to start giving him a bit of freedom. And obviously Reynold doesn't see this attack coming in until it's already coming through. Now the creep is still here. There's just no tumor, so you don't get the vision initially on this army moving in. You will still get the speed boost advantage, though, and that's something to keep in mind as the queen goes down around the back. Ling Bay Muta trying to catch reinforcing marines. Here we go. Reynold going to pull the trigger as he wants to protect his hatchery. Ugh, there's only so many places you can split to when you're in the middle of the map like this, and Zerg comes from all angles. That is going to still be a reasonable trade from here. Marines, he loses. Okay, this could be the big part, right? If these medevacs go down, the Muta's able to grab those. That could be where Hero Marine ends up pulling a little bit down on supply at the end of this. Didn't really mind it overall, though, and Reynold doesn't have Banes really close enough, not to, you know, not off of creep spread, at least, to, to put into use. Now, Hero Marine's, um... Uh, Thor is setting up, trying to move around a little bit. One sec, guys. I have a slight issue. 
My uh, hard drive is full, which is going to be a little bit awkward. Give me like two seconds. That's just going to be seen as Marine Thor army continuing down. It's a little bit awkward because I'm trying to record this uh, series as always. I need some disk space. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully that uh, fixes it. A couple of Thor's going to go in at each other, and these Mutas taking some damage. Some Mutas getting beat up a little bit. Marines and Marauders coming through to keep those chased away. And just going to be seeing Raynor having to back this back out to the center of the map again. So, Mutas back out into the center. Marine, Thor, Marauder Force continue to come on through. Now, Lings are going to go diving by, moving into this Bio Force. Nice little run by here, to be fair. It's just going to see a few of these links continue to be picked apart. Again, our army continuing through the centers here. Marine pushing. Raynor's in a bit of trouble, I think. The the trades here... I don't even know if it's the trades, right? I mean, he's just down on army supply. He's got money he ain't spending right now. He's maybe a little bit lava-starved. A few more links on the way up. This is also now plus two attack versus 1-1. One, one. There's no plus two armor for here, Marine. He is missing that. I obviously started that a little bit late here, but these trades continue to look well as here Marine. And he's bringing the fire right now. He's actually just, he's just killing it. Great trades, great position. Obviously had the plan of how he wanted to push on this map. And he's doing just that with this Arax. No force CC behind it, keeping the pressure going. And I mean, he's going to start killing bases. And that's definitely the start of uh, trouble for Raynor here. As these Morphin Banes are going to finish up. They are going to go rolling out this pre-split Terran army. That's also going to be able to split back off of Creep to continue to avoid damage. You can see that that's obviously not going to end well. And as our bio force continues forward, these few extra links continue to go down. We are going to be seeing the Banes continuing through, and they're going to go in for a few more Marines. GG, here Marine is going to grab the first game of this TVZ. That's in the bottom left-hand side, a red Terran player is Hero Marine. That's in the bottom right. Our blue Zerg is Raynor. No, I didn't. I didn't down. It wasn't the warships. It was. It was something else. I, I have to have warships installed because I'm going to play it again on stream on Friday or so, probably. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. It wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't warships. It was just something else. Oh well, that's annoying. So. Yeah, I guess this isn't recording right now, which does kind of suck, I'm not going to lie. I guess I just downloaded from Twitch, though, after. I've just not done that in a while, so that might be interesting. All right, all right, it's okay. I'm going to stop worrying. It'll turn out to be all right. I'm sure. Dot, dot, dot. Please. It's too late now, anyways. All right, so, um, game number two. Hammering leads one to zero. Eight racks is good, turns out. Guys, I'm just sad because I'm looking for the top end YouTube content, you know. And you know when I slap Reno and Hero Marine's name on a on a YouTube title, it's gonna pull views. It's all right. I'll look around. It just makes my life more difficult. It's okay. And we still have a Twitch vod. I just have to download my Twitch VOD. And the last time I tried to download my Twitch VOD, it went um, <laughs> it went horrendously wrong. I can't remember what happened, but like it, it wouldn't start downloading. And so I tried it a few times and just it was unresponsive, right? And like I reset my PC, you tried it again, unresponsive. And I went AFK and I came back and I downloaded the same Twitch VOD 17 times. And my hard drive was once again full and <laughs> and having issues because it was trying to download the same thing 17 times. And uh, it was a pretty big file because it's a whole stream, you know? It was a, it was a real 10 out of 10 moment, to be honest. Like really, really great, <laughs> great effort, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a while to download. Yeah, it takes ages to start downloading. It's really dumb. Anyways, all good. All Gucci. I'll just, like, highlight the end of this stream. And, uh, and I'll just uh, download it all. It's gonna be all right. Sorry, guys. Silly me, huh? So, we are gonna be, uh, seeing the Reaper chasing down a drone. Uh, so Ribbon has obviously got to jump out spot to the bottom side. He gets a circling, which is a nice little cheeky, cheeky addition to his kill count there. Just picks up that Ling and now backs it up around this bottom side. Going to hop down to the low ground and 
just about escape out of there for the moment. So we're basically able to escape away. Starboard's coming through on the main. Third CC is coming up. I'm just going to see our second gas as well. So 3cc, double gas in it from here. I have everything you expect from a 3cc. It is Blackburn. Blackburn's been kind of a fun map. A lot of people seem to hate this map, and I don't know why. It's almost like you guys hate fun. I think this map's pretty fun, pretty cool. Yeah, you got a bit of a shorter rush distance to it, but you know, on the on the trade-off of that, you only have one choke point you need to hold in the entire game, unless you know, your opponent then takes the longer rush distance around, which shock horror removes the issue you're meant to have with the with the map. I actually think this, the, the one thing I do see maybe being a problem is very late game here can be very Terran favored because I, I do genuinely believe it can be difficult if you're having kind of a close back and forth game. It's going to be very difficult to get off of the six bases as a Zerg or so. Whereas the Terrans are going to hold six bases quite easily, I think. So, yeah, choke points, that sounds fun for Terran. Eh, well, I mean, you also ever heard of, like, using other parts of the map as well? It is pretty choked up, to be fair. I, I don't disagree. Yeah. You guys think it's a super Terran favorite? Hmm. I don't think it's that Zerg favorite. I think it's good later game for Terran. I think the good thing for Zerg here is you've got a lot of counterattack potential. For sure. You can go up this top side, you can go from here and like a couple of different ways up here very easily. And these pathways are pathways the Terran will never really use, so it's very hard for those counterattacks to be picked up on by units moving around the map and stuff, you know? I think the big thing is that you can absolutely just take a couple of... Like, there's, there's definitely some positions, I think, that are very good for Terran. Yeah. I, I, I Honestly, I shouldn't really comment on the maps and, and races because... I just want to see more of them still. It's going to take a while. It's been a while since we have to readjust to, like, balance on new maps, isn't it? So, uh, I, I definitely haven't seen enough and enough interest and stuff to, to figure it out. I think this map's very fun. What we did see in the TLMC on this map was very promising. Like, this map gave a lot of really fun games, a lot of really long games. I actually thought this map had a lot of potential onto it. It won the TLMC that it was part of, so a lot of people liked it. Yeah. The good thing about Weird Mouse is it takes a while to figure out and you'll see some things kind of develop and some players won't reveal things that they find about the map or strategies they think are good on the map until a bigger tournament as well, so there's a you know, there's a lot to look at in that regard as the drones going down right away, the Banshee's having a good time there, making a couple of pickoffs. Banshee's around in the back of the natural. A oh, little bit of a misclick there. And Drone's just going to get back to mining again. Alright, well, not too big of an issue as these Banshees peel away. Interesting that Humory wants to go for this Banshee style again. I guess just wants to stay safe. It is a bit of a shorter rush. To, to be fair, it is a roach setup, so Banshee's not a bad thing. Important to keep these Banshees alive, I think, if your opponent's playing this roach style. Because if Reno's looking to hit like a 1-1 Roach time and you can just put two Banshees overhead and keep them overhead and deal damage during that attack, you're going to have a pretty good time. What I'm intrigued about is you can see what Reno's doing. He's opening this up. The one thing he doesn't want is Humory to just defend this attack from this direction and just have tanks and a bunker set up to be able to defend these Roaches. What he wants is to be able to come through this side as well and add a whole new angle of attack that's going to spread the tank shots and make this more difficult to handle. Looks like Reno's not aiming for a big 1-1 time in any way as he has an infestation pick coming up. What's fun about this from here, Marine, is that he never saturated the third base. So this attack is way faster and maybe more aggressive than you initially think it is. This is a bit of a, a bit of the soul special, isn't it? The uh, the setup that we have here. This uh, double engineering bay. I, I believe you go extra racks before you go for the engineering bays. And then you really commit to this aggressive timing and... Right now, it's working pretty well. These units are doing good, working their way through this army. In fact, Randall's playing Roaches and Ravages definitely helps, I would say, because that in general is just a bit of a sturdier army anyway. And you are going to get on top of this base and kill this off. Remember, Hero is only 48 SCVs behind this, so he hasn't got the best of economies, so it's quite important for him to do very well very early on here. Like, you can't let this go on forever. One of these tanks survives long enough to actually get a shot or two off that it wouldn't have got usually. 
And she's still dealing damage throughout this. I think Raynor is going to maybe start turning this around. Obviously, here he's just rallying reinforcements across. But his medivacs are about to be out of energy as well. So he's about to lose a lot of power in this army. And he's just going to start backing it up. He does start building SCVs behind it. The thing is, Raynor also has a gold base now up and running and ready to saturate. So recovery from this position ain't easy when you're kind of playing catch up on the SCV count. Very nicely held by Raynor. Yeah, this was very well handled. It's just going to see a little drop up into the main base. This is one thing you can do now against this Roach style, of course. Stop dropping around and trying to work with this as Hero Marine still maintains a pretty sizable army advantage. Of course, it's the economy of Raynor that's going to start churning out the units in the very near future. That may be a problem. But what's really interesting is, of course, this is Roach Ravager. And you're playing Roach Ravager from down on army supply? That's generally not meant to be a good thing for you as a, as a Zerg player. Let's just put it like that. That's actually meant to be pretty terrible for you. So, really intrigued as to how that develops here. Is he going to try and cancel a fifth hatch top right? Honestly, a drop back here would get a few creep tumors and uh, maybe a couple of uh, you know, drones from the ba uh, back side of this. He's going to get that drone as he dodges the bile as well. Looking to go back in the main. Reno is getting a lot of spores up. He really wants to stop this drop style from happening. Here, he just finds a different position. He does swap that medivac to the back. And for the moment... We'll keep it alive. Doesn't go to pick up the units in it, so he will get it out of there. And building a fourth CC behind it. Credit to Hero Marine putting on some good pressure. Heavily supply blocked now, though, and that's a big macro error as as Raynor is maybe getting enough time to go up to Lurkers. Uh, well, well, let's see. I mean, the problem for Hero Marine is that he's also just on pure bio army. No siege tanks here at all. So maybe that's part of why his army supply has been a little bit higher up as... This looks like we're just going to go for a big drop into this base. Doesn't really care about the spores. A few roaches get here. He's going to fly over the spores, begin to unload. There's another spore over here as well, though. Problem is for the roaches, if it's just the roaches, the marauder count is very well against them. He needs to get rid of uh, this spore, right? Can't, doesn't really want to lose his uh, medivacs or take too much damage on them. He actually um, magic kills the spawning pool, which is going to stop ling production, I guess. There's another spore here. Now you can actually lift up and get out without taking additional hits. Seven drones dead. This one Marauder still trying to harass up a right. Two twos about to finish from here, uh, from Raynor, and those upgrades are definitely going to help him out quite a bit. Let's do have our bio force back into the center, regathering. Army continuing to cross to this right-hand side. Lurkers are coming through. We are getting to the last moments of this game. Well, I believe that... Hero Marine can really have a chance of breaking Raynor down. Once these Lurkers are up, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. I mean, the 2-2 upgrades for me was already maybe a bit too much. Now he's going to split. He's going to fight in. He knows it's now or never. And unfortunately, it looks like it might just be never. There's Vipers out as well. Raynor has defended. Raynor has held on. And he's going to be able to drag this out. To a game number three, it would seem. As some Roaches show up, this Marauder is going to go down. Medivac flies up to the top side. The 2-2 two -two upgrade's still coming in. The Ghost Academy is going to drop into the back of the natural as well. I just think it's way too far along to try and play this. We talked about this fourth base build and how long ago, and it's only just now setting up. Man, the supplies are still kind of similar. Is there a way for Hero Marine? Am I being a little bit too, like, you know, far forward with my kind of assumptions here? It just feels kind of ridiculous, right? Raynor just has this fifth base. I mean, this fifth base was denied a long time as well, to be fair. Uh, well, what is interesting is, of course, when you mine out this gold, you're going to lose that boost, and you're going to lose a base of mining. So then you're going to need this base. And that is where, if Humoring can get to a point where maybe you can deny that base, yeah, but surely at that stage, you're going to get the creep down here, and you're just going to park Lurkus here. So then how does Humoring ever attack in? Well, I guess you don't need to. That's why you start playing a slow game, and you start playing the long game on Blackburn. Which we just talked about. Oh my god. Okay, okay. It's kind of cool to hear, see Hero Marine using this kind of the soul build. I, uh, I forgot about the soul build. It only really clicked when I was like, wait a second, that's a lot of units. It's like, oh my god, he's he cut he cut workers. Okay, Hero Marine is is about 190 supply, so he's gonna max out a game. His upgrades were late, but they're in the game now. They're only plus three missiles from his opponents, so he can actually play catch up and and get up and running there. I guess one of my my problems for for Hero Marine is maybe is there a problem for Hero Marine? No, he just sniped down two lurkers and he's just, sorry two vipers and he just sniped down two lurkers as well. 
Um, he's got a tank can to hold off this attack. I think my problem for Reino is that maybe that his composition is actually not the best at pushing in and breaking a location, and that means that Hero Marine really can draw this out to the later stage. Wow. Oh. I, I actually really do think uh, Hero Marine is in a way better position than I was maybe getting. In my mind, those Lurgus came up, and I just sort of thought that Hero Marine was still kind of like really desperate to end it. And I think he, I mean, in a way, he might have been, but at the same time, like, he has got a fourth base now. He's got a fifth about to finish. And, and again, what are you going to do as Raynor to get that fifth base tonight? Probably not a lot. I, I mean, like, a few lurkers up there or so. Probably your best bets. This map's going to start developing around the middle of the map now as well. Wow, it's been a really fascinating game. I feel like I might have to go back and look at this one over again. What's been really fun about it is the different stages, right? You know, here Rain realizing he had to start dropping and attacking all over and stuff and trying to slow Raynor down. And now he's realizing that's not worked out. He's got to slow it down himself, at least get up to those extra bases. And now he's obviously able to start, you know, getting these ghosts into play. The fifth base goes to the gold, which is a little bit more difficult to defend against, of course. And uh, probably going to lose quite a few SCVs there unless he gets some units up in time. He's going to get a bit of bio running in, so... Wow, he didn't lose any SCVs, so that's incredible as well. Good defense from here, Marine. Rain not finding any damage for those few lurkers. This is the annoying part of, obviously, a gold base. Tank here is, I believe, in range. Oh, no, the tank's not siege. It's the sensor tower that I'm seeing the line for. One more snipes lined up just before the lurkers got burrowed. Oh, a duct on a medevac and a ghost. A couple snipes still coming down. Parasite bombs. Medevacs need to split away. Don't want to take too much damage on those. Last thing you want is all your medevacs to pop in an instant. Reno is trying to take this base up here. That's his. That's base number six for him in this game because he doesn't feel like he can take this base down here yet. Now, if he can get that base, brilliant. Because I actually think that base overall is quite difficult to hold. Let's see if he can if he can really get it up and run. Is going to be seen attempting to push on through, and these tanks are just obliterating units initially. Finally, the tank count's going to start going down, but. Mostly because I guess there was no detection here towards the end of this. The lurk has never got shot at. Reno has a good amount of minerals behind this. Not so much in the gas bank, though. He has already rebuilt a few lurkers and a few hydras, though. So there is something to be said about that as well. One lurker just going to burrow up behind this mineral line. A couple shots going down. SCV's in some trouble. A couple of workers already dropping off here. This SCV just going to repair up this turret. Another turret going down in the gold base. I think like a Viper goes darting through the center. A couple of tanks find a way. Snipes. Ooh. Well, here's the EMPs on the Vipers in the end, which only really got off some parasitic bombs. Oh man, that's a lot of lurkers that are moving through. The ghosts are going to try and snipe up a storm. I tell you what, the lings go down very quickly, but those lurkers are deadly once they get sieged. And these ghosts find a defense here. And the additional snipes necessary. Hammering lost a bit of supply there. He's got a couple tanks, gets two more lurkers at the end of this, and he's going to try and chase down. Maybe snipe down the overseer. And this lurker gets pushed back again as... Yeah, right now, topside base mining, I think, is pretty important. And Hammering's going to see that now and maybe start to make a play up there. Reno. Definitely having a better few moments in the last uh, last little while. It's, it's still been up and down. Resources lost really in here in Marine's favor. Of course, the one thing here needs to make sure of is, you know, he doesn't lose everything or too much at once because then it doesn't matter how efficiently you're trading if you don't already have the money to rebuild it. I, do, I still don't actually necessarily know. If here Marine just keeps denying this base... He can probably let Raynor have this base. That's not too bad of a thing. I love the Liberators to deny the mining. It's actually a pretty cool way of doing it for now. Let's slow down the progress up there. Man, this is so zergling heavy at the moment. The Ling's going to be the buffer for these Lurkers. Giving the Lurkers the chance to come forward and to obviously get sieged up and burrowed. The other side of this is if the Ling's go too far forward on their own, the Ghosts do really, well, really, really well against them. Of course, if the Ling's can surround the Ghosts, then they can stop a lot of the Snipes from coming down, and that's... A lot of the goal here is Snipes trying to go down there on the Lurkers. Well, that just didn't work at all. 
But then these links continue too far forward, and all of a sudden you've just lost all of the Zerglings, right? So this goes back and forth in a heartbeat. As Liberators are continuing to find pretty annoying positions to siege up on, and I mean, they're actually destroying the economy. 14 drones went down. His goes trying to snipe a couple of abducts coming through. It's rain or down on supply. He does have money to spend, but I wonder if he's wondering what to actually build. He's starting to get a bit of a gas bank. Would a couple of infestors do him good here? Try and help with fungals to cancel some of these ghost snipes. Just catch the ghosts when they're clumped up. He's going to build a few more vipers for now. I mean, at some point with all of the links that he's been making, he's going to have to do something to, you know, bring his gas count down as well. Because he's been very kind of ling or mineral heavy recently. A bit of bio just shows up over here and grabs a look up before it burrows up and... That idea is denied. Man, there's so many spores. Rain will actually just have a line of spores. It's like, you don't dare drop me, by the way, here, Marine. I don't want any of your dirty medivacs in my main base. Absolutely not. No way. No freaking way. Not having it. Type is just going to go consume up on this extractor. Bit of bio. A few goes setting up. Coming through the front. A little cancel on that hatchery. Is we going to be seeing the... Ghost going to get some more snipes, but the creeps ready to push back. I mean, like I say, denying this base. I never thought that denying this base would be kind of the goal of the Terran player and just kind of letting this one be harassed. But the way this game played out, it made sense. And a lot of these pushes are kind of showing us why Human Ring can do that. I got to say credit to Human Ring because he's, um, he's leaving a lot of tanks behind in good positions to stop the lurkers from getting into the right places as well, right? That's definitely helping him a lot. His lug is going to fire up and doing a pretty good job of this. Hearing is still holding out in the middle of the map. Uh, what a great game. I, I will not regret. I, I do not regret going back and saying I was kind of wrong about how this game was playing out early. Because, geez, I really thought Reynold just had this on lockdown. I thought Hearing Marine missed his opportunities. But he really just had different phases of the game, right? Like, he switched away from the initial attack into. Right, time to stop attacking, time to stop dropping. I know I've said this once before, but I think it's just so fascinating to go back and think about that. He stopped with that phase, and he stopped that dropping phase to start playing a bit more of a defensive game. And then he stopped the defensive game to start playing this pushing, never stopping game once he got up to maxed. And knowing that at least then he could be competitive with the army again. Like, he really just played this game, like, a few different styles in this game. And transitioned from them fairly seamlessly. As Reynolds' army obviously transitioned itself, and adapted and, and try to deal with it. Here we go. Look, is going to make a push forward. Those want to get out of there. The tanks get blinding cloud to hell and back. Oh, no. That's a big fight for uh, Reynold to start with. A few tanks in the back here are still firing away, mind you. Both players are dropping a lot of supply, i got to say. I mean, a lot of the ghosts get out alive. That's important. A couple tanks still sieging up, trying to hold positions. These lurkers are, are really down on HP. A lot of that was just not finding the EMP soon enough, arguably, as now we're going to push forward, and these lurkers are going to get scanned. Took a little while, didn't it? It felt as though he was running on top of them before he had the scan available. 126 to 125 supply here. 21 minutes on Blackburn. 11,000 resource loss difference favoring here, Marine, who's looking for a 6 o'clock base. There is nothing from Raynor that is good against this base right now. Maybe... Well, there isn't, because he doesn't even really control the bottom side of the map. He's going to try and expand over here, which is not a bad idea, because you are getting to the point where you are running out of economy on your current bases. All right, he has this base, half base, and this base mining. That's not enough. You need this base. But because Hiramarine is now going to focus on taking the bottom, he can not only defend this base, he can take this one down. And what might really weirdly happen is if Hiramarine starts caring less about over here, maybe Reno can take this base play around this top side while well, Hiramri maybe pushes forward and takes it. I mean, that would be really ridiculous. But is it impossible? No. There's so much possibility right now. Lurkers are going to burrow up. I mean, this gold has a little bit of life left on it, so it's a shame to lose this before you're really done mining it. So Ling is going to run through the bottom side. Uh, they don't even find the siege tank, because that was a beautiful one siege to make sure. Well, actually, I guess this tank would have killed the tank anyway. There was a, the idea of the siege was good, though. The, the thought was there. Hiramarine is back into an overall supply lead as he's pushing forward. Reno has to cancel up this hatch bottom of the map.
Things will come through, jumping onto the siege tank now. Gonna end up backing it away. Four more lurkers in production. A couple of ghosts, the marines, the tanks all still coming through. As Raynor brings a Ling Lurker army down through the center of the map here, down to the bottom. Hatch is gonna start up. We're gonna try and push on in. This is the maybe the one thing that you can do, like I say, lurkers in the low ground. I'm still learning. I don't think I've seen a game where this base actually ends up being taken, not for a significant amount of time. I saw it be taken once, and it got denied about two minutes later in a TBT, I want to say. Okay. I mean, this is bad for Humory if he loses mining there, because he is running out of mining himself. So the men maybe do have to focus on the top left. And again, because Reno is able to deny this base, he maybe gets this base up himself a little bit more easily. But now Humory says, if you're going to try and defend down there, I will attack up here. And then are you gaining a base just to lose a base? Well, yes, probably. Uh, and that's the the beautiful rotations of this map and the struggle that Raynor has to defend on this map. Hatchery in the top left is going to be probably going down. This hatch is going down as well. I tell you what would be a big deal. All those drones going down. That's 30 drones. If all these drones just died, that's actually like Raynor's economy in general. Like, never mind having hatcheries or not. Rebuilding that amount of drones takes a lot of money. Seven go down. That could have been a lot worse. I'm kind of... I think Henry was afraid he was going to get jumped on while over there. And he didn't want to get kind of caught up the ramp or anything crazy chasing down drones. But honestly, a couple of Marines would have gotten the job done. As he introduces Liberators back into his play to push through the bottom side. I assume they can maybe push forward again to try and siege up here. Of course, then Vipers could have ducked them. That's at least going to take some of the Viper energy away. Oh, tanks already in position here. A couple of first snipes coming through. Tanks do get jumped on by the Lings, but that's pretty much the end of the Zerglings. There it goes. Going to get a couple of final snipes off here as the Lurkers are being picked away at. Reynolds' supply is just not really cutting it. He's not finding anything with the Vipers either. As he's just not getting in range to abduct anything or blinding cloud anything. Link counterattack here doesn't find any new bases. So again, you're going to realize, okay, well, here Marine... Is real low on economy as well. Both players are playing a low eco game at this stage, really. Just for the fact that they might have reasonable work accounts, but they both have such few bases to mine from that actually have minerals left 25 minutes deep in the game. There we go. A big stim in from uh, here. Marine just going to go for this. Try and break this down. Ooh, I mean, there's so many Marines that are dropping so quickly. Ghosts are still trying to snipe down the last few lurkers. <sighs> Supply plummeted for here, Marine, but he's going to get a huge clean out. And Reynor does not exactly have the money to rebuild a Lurk account, of all things. He's got four Lurkers on the way. He'll never get to that Lurk account again, though. We have lost 81 Lurkers in this game. 27 Ghosts in comparison. 49 Vipers, 400 plus Lynx, and 200 plus Marines. As you push on in, the win for Hero Marine is being able to deny this hatchery. And to basically put Reynor down to zero mine. He scans top left to make sure there's a base. Not a base he doesn't know about. He has really got Raynor down to, like, his last little bit of anything, really. I mean, he's got nothing in the bank. His mining, his income is absolutely gone. He, he's long-distance mining. That's all he's got. The income graph has skyrocketed in favor of Hero Marine, holding out the bottom side while Raynor takes the top side. Just want to remind you guys, you said Blackburn was a really bad map at the start of this cast, and, uh... You know, I'm just going to stand by that. I think it's given us a pretty darn cool game. Hero Marine has a Reaper. I don't see the Reaper, guys. Maybe I missed it. Here you go, Lurkers and Viper's going to come through. A couple turrets are going to be able to get rid of a Viper. I mean, that's not what you want. Liberator isn't going down, so the Liberator is apparently going to be the defense here. SCV's trying to repair it. They are in Lurker range, though. There's a lot of SCVs that are dropping off. The thing is, Hiramine has more SCVs here than he needs, so... Not really the issue, right? Lings are kind of the biggest problem right now for Hiramine, it feels like. They are getting a lot done. Cleans out this creep. Ghosts are going chasing. Oh no, there's no detection! Snipes going down. There's just, just no detection. There's just no way to see these ghosts. There's no Overseer. He can't afford a freaking Overseer! He runs back to his spore crawl to try and survive, and that's the sad state of affairs. If you're a Raynor fan right now, he's down a map. Somehow, Hero Marine's up 8-0. Uh, he's actually only up 1-0, guys. Uh, but Hero Marine is up 1-0. And now is up 2-0 and wins the series with this 28-minute epic on Blackburn. As he denies the top side for mining again. And Raynor just has no income.
G. G. What a freaking game of StarCraft 2. I, I just want to go back and just remind us of, of what happened initially in this game. Like, some of the moments in this game were actually wild. Like, this initial build from Hero Marine, this initial attack, that kind of felt like it didn't do enough. And Raynor comes out on a huge worker lead. I mean, this was kind of crazy, right? So you can see he's he's got this push right now. Like, he's cut workers hardcore, right? He's pushing, he's attacking. Like, this attack itself is kind of scary. Reynolds on 70 drones, his upgrades are not going to be done during this attack like they are for Hero Marine. This itself was a sick hold from Raynor. Like, he, this, this hold itself was sick, and you can understand. You come out of this, right? The Banshee still trades. This isn't done yet, but once it gets pushed back, Let's have a look what happens once this gets pushed back. Go back a little bit. Like, right now, this is kind of dealt with. 25 worker lead. This base is only just starting to be saturated now because he's realized, oh, crap, I need SCVs. Resources lost isn't even that bad. And, and then here, like, I just don't... Like, the thing is, he still has that army advantage, and he just starts dropping. It's not only do you have the army advantage, but you're going to have the mobility advantage, and he makes great use of it, man. Like, like I say, like... This game had so many different stages to it, and it was kind of wonderful to watch. Hell yeah, 10 out of 10. That was a, uh... That was a, that, that was a freaking series, guys. G freaking G's.